take a walk down almost any grocery aisle and you're gonna spot this stuff. We're not talking about ordinary foods. We're talking about superfoods. We review the label on about 100 products. One thing we learn when you're talking about superfoods, usually that means super prices. Let's talk about some of the things that are in these products. Omega-3s, protein, electrolytes. These things sure sound super, but are they really? It's time to find out. This is your marketplace. First up, coconut water. Did you start the clock? Yes, I did. We're getting ready to put this popular drink through a stress test. It's tap water versus coconut water. On the street, there's no contest. How are you? Doing good? Can I stop you for a quick second? Why choose it over just tap water? It's more hydrating. It has uh, electrolytes, so I'm a cyclist, so when I go on long rides, it's better fuel. What have you heard about coconut water? It hydrates better than water. And you believe it? Yes, because it's uh, more, uh, more uh, refreshing. Uh-huh. Yeah. What about for hydration? Yeah. Very much, yeah. Hydrating, yeah. I heard about more. Heard about that? Really? You think it's 10 times more hydrating? Than the regular water? I think originally, uh, I heard it has uh, maybe electrolytes in it or something like that to help mm -hmm. replenish more than just water. And they may have gotten some of those ideas from years of advertising like this. If you want the ultimate ride, you need the ultimate hydration drink. Hydration comes naturally. It's loaded with electrolytes, so it's incredibly hydrating, and that's really the key. Coconut water is costly. Prices range from $3 to $6.50 a liter. More importantly, you're metabolizing all of the great stuff that's inside at a much higher rate. Five times more potassium than a banana. Marketing that seems to have hit the mark. In just two years, sales of coconut water increased by 66%, boosted by some high-profile investors and cocoa evangelists. Having Vita Coco on stage helps because it, it tastes good, but it keeps you hydrated. It may sound super, but for our test, we want to know, is it that much better at keeping you hydrated than plain tap water? At Brock University, Stephen Chung is a sports scientist. At his lab, he puts people through extreme temperatures and stress to see what happens to their bodies. Right now, I probably run three, four times a week. We're going to be exercising in the heat today, and yeah. you're going to be running at a decent pace. You're going to be sweating quite a bit. Okay. And so one of the perps, what we want to do is see whether water or coconut water helps you maintain hydration better. Right. To figure out how well coconut water hydrates me, I need a little privacy. We're, uh, we're going to the washroom. Oh my god, I'm actually doing this. Next big hurdle, weighing myself on television. 68.5 kilograms, and so in pounds, that is 151. So this is my 500 milliliters of coconut water. There are uh, about 45 calories in here, 11 grams of carbs, 11 grams of sugar, um, jam-packed with naturally occurring electrolytes, and uh, what's the other one? Oh, uh, more potassium in here than a banana. One of the things we want to see is whether you absorb it and get it into your, your fluids, into your cells, okay. or whether it just comes straight out through your kidneys. And how hot is it in that room? 35 degrees? Yes, and 40% relative humidity. Whoa. Just like a nice hot Ontario day, huh? It feels like a sauna. My speed and incline are set. I'm running for an hour. Steven is going to ask me how I'm feeling, take my core temperature, and my heart rate every 15 minutes. Get off whenever you're ready. Wow. After 60 minutes, the results are in. And so far, coconut water is living up to the public's perception. Steven is surprised with the results you haven't really kind of shown any signs of dehydration. But we're not done yet. In less than 24 hours, I'm at it again. I still have that one hour run ahead, but the payoff, finding out what hydrates me better. Yesterday it was coconut water and today it's a challenger. Let's see how we do. Good old fashioned Ontario tap water. I'm savoring this because I know it's the only water I'm gonna get. 
As soon as I go in there, I'm gonna want more. <laughs> so unlike coconut water, this isn't doesn't make any claims to be jam-packed with electrolytes or of course has no no calories either. And after drinking the water. Well, you're definitely nice and hydrated. Comes the hard part. Here we go for round two. That's right. So my legs were definitely sore yesterday. I feel okay right now. Let's get her done. With a minute to go, my core temperature is the same as yesterday, and I've got a few familiar feelings. Hot. Hot and comfort? Very uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah, I'm very thirsty. Like, I keep licking my lips and I'm getting nothing. Um, so I really do want water or something to hydrate me. Steven tells me my response is similar both days, but our test was actually a bit tougher on tap water. We stacked the deck against water, hmm. and it still held up just as well as coconut water, if not better. I would sum everything up by saying coconut water can hydrate you, but it doesn't necessarily do a better job than water. If anything, water might just be a little bit better from what, what you've shown anyways. But it's not just my test. The science is pretty new, but studies are coming to similar conclusions, that there's no significant benefit to coconut water over plain water. Vita Coco and One Coconut Water are two of the top selling brands. We contact One Coconut Water, but its parent company, PepsiCo, didn't want to be interviewed. When we tell Vita Coco about the results of our test with tap water, they say it's the potassium that helps your workout. Take a look at the side of the container. It's right there. Jam-packed full of naturally occurring electrolytes. That's absolutely true, but it's jam-packed with potassium, whereas what you sweat out is really sodium, so it may not be the best rehydration tool that way. And check out this claim. No fat and no cholesterol means big hearts and small butts. The other one is small butts, big hearts. <laughs> no idea how to respond. Water has no calories. Coconut water has 45 calories a cup, so you're gaining extra calories that you may not really need. And legally speaking, in 2011 and 2012, Vita Coco and One Coconut Water were named in class action lawsuits over nutrition claims in Canada and the U.S. A California judge dismissed the allegation accusing One Coconut Water. The class action accusations against Vita Coco didn't go to trial either. Instead, the company settled and they have stopped making certain claims. Like their products are super hydrating, nutrient packed, mega electrolyte, life enhancing super water. Besides offering consumers compensation, Vita Coco agreed to change its labels and its marketing. Vita Coco tells us it now does not position its beverages as offering better hydration than tap water. Bottom line, if you love the taste and don't mind spending up to six bucks a liter, go for it. But if you're drinking coconut water for the hydration, then consider tap water, which science says does the trick. We break the news on the street. In terms of how it hydrated me, it was about the same. Really? Results were about the same. Is that right? Huh. Hydrate's about the same. Really? Well, that's just what they advertise, right? So I guess I'm paying into the advertisements. Super grain or super hype? This is not the way to get your it's quinoa. <laughs> it's a chocolate bar. Taking a bite out of quinoa and chia's super claims. So if you're looking to get omega-3, you'd have to eat a lot of it. Get more Marketplace. Sign up for our weekly newsletter at cbc.ca slash marketplace. The real deal on your marketplace. We're taking a closer look at some super claims, reviewing about 100 labels on popular super foods. Next up, quinoa, a super grain often imported from South America. And lift off. In 1993, NASA scientists promoted quinoa as astronaut food because of its nutritional properties. Fast forward 20 years and the UN declares 2013 the International Year of Quinoa. Seriously, 
the International Year of Quinoa. Marketed as a high-protein, low-carb grain, quinoa's popularity continues to rise. In just two years, sales have nearly doubled. You'd be hard-pressed to find people more serious about their diets than Olympians. That's why we came to this high-performance centre where Canada's Olympic track and field team trains. Team dietitian Jen Saigo with her take on quinoa. It's not going to be a major protein source like a meat or eggs mm -hmm. or even things like beans and lentils and chickpeas. A cup of cooked quinoa will give you about 8 grams of protein, whereas a typical chicken breast could give you 30 grams or more. And it's not low carb either. It's quite high in calories, uh, at 220 or so calories per cup of cooked quinoa. So you're not going to lose weight. And that's quinoa in its purest form. Jen says its nutrition seriously goes sideways when this happens. So these are skinny quinoa sticks. Look at her face. This is superfood. Another bag of chips. Oh, superfood granola with quinoa. Uh, nourished pop granola with quinoa. <laughs> quinoa, quinoa's everywhere. We basically have taken a quinoa grain kernel and highly processed it into this until you've obliterated a lot of the nutrition and then turn it into something that might be high in salt and sugar. I'm not saying this particular food is, but I think we have to be aware of that. that this is not the way to get your quinoa. Come on, it's a chocolate bar. Canadian alternative to quinoa would be? A potato. Calorie-wise, they're basically on par. And yes, you sacrifice a bit of that protein, but potatoes are really high in potassium, which is important for blood pressure control. Yeah. And they're also good sources of vitamin C. They're great sources of fiber. They're so underappreciated. And they're also much cheaper. For four bucks, you can get a four and a half kilogram bag of potatoes or a 400 gram package of quinoa. And get this, NASA has changed course too, away from quinoa, focusing on fresh food instead. After all, potatoes worked for Matt Damon, and that was on Mars. I'm a botanist. And Jen says that simple swap of an expensive superfood for a better for you Canadian alternative applies to an increasingly popular seed too. What about chia seeds? Do you guys eat chia seeds? Yes, I do. And why? Why chia seeds? Because it's good uh, for cholesterol. It's very good. And it's, it, it's a superfood. Do you eat chia seeds? I do. <laughs> what about chia seeds? Do you eat chia seeds? Yes. How do you eat your chia? Oatmeal, okay. salad. I put it in with my um, shakes. Why chia seeds? I heard it was good for you. I heard that they have omega-3 fats. And seems we're really buying in. In just the past two years, chia sales have more than tripled. When it comes to the most common claim that chia is high in omega-3s, our dietitian thinks there's a better alternative. Even if you ate this whole bowl of chia, an entire bag, you'd still be getting less omega-3s than just one piece of salmon. Another catch, for the body to use the chia seeds, it has to convert them to acids, and our bodies don't do that well. Your body converts somewhere between about 0 and 10% of that into a usable form of omega-3. That's so, it? Yeah. That's not very much. No, so that basically comes down to 0.3 milligrams or less per serving. So it, So that's a lot of it, chia. It's an inconvenient way to get your omega-3s. So if you're looking to get omega-3, this is going to take your body a lot of work to get the good stuff out. You'd have to eat a lot of it. And you can't eat a lot of it because it has too much fiber in it. So yeah. Eventually it'll make it, yeah. We'll see where that goes. It'll <laughs> If you want to stick with seeds, Jen suggests opting for a Canadian alternative to the imported chia. Flaxseed. Besides being a homegrown product, flax is about a third of the price of chia. Remember, a bag of chia was about $15 compared to just five for flax. Whoa, 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 Our pro dietitian does a double take. There's real issues with the claims oh, on here. Is this misleading consumers? Prevents cancer? This is your marketplace. Got a story you think we should investigate? Email us. 
marketplace at cbc.ca. Busting superfoods. Do you believe in superfoods? Yes, I do. What's a superfood? I don't know really. <laughs> I just see it on packages. I'm like, oh, okay, that sounds good. Super seed, super grains, super food. Makes me stop and read the label. But that label, superfood, is completely unregulated. Companies can claim any product is some kind of superfood. We reviewed about 100 labels and showed some of those to Team Canada's dietitian, Jen Saigo. This one caught her attention. Superfood granola with quinoa. So on the back here it says, energy booster, sleep aid, cardiovascular, controls blood sugar, <gasps> curb food craving, weight control, lower oh, cholesterol, no. prevents whoa, cancer. Whoa, 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 whoa. Reduces risk of Alzheimer's. Wow. wow. All in this convenient package of granola. Really <laughs> there's, there's real issues with the oh, claims on here. Well, the claims on here, I, I'm quite concerned about. Just there's stating the facts. It's so. not that though. Health Canada is very clear about what you can label. Real issues because companies aren't allowed to say foods can prevent serious diseases like cancer. Yeah, no, this yeah. concerns me. We take our concerns to Halifax to food scientist Wasantha Rupa Singhi. He's built a career studying health benefits of foods. He says the government is failing to fix a key issue. There is no scientific definition for a superfood. Mm. Companies are using the word superfood without any scientific base or without any government criteria. Why is that a problem? So the, the consumers believe when you see the word superfood, uh, it is better than the other regular food. But it doesn't have to be that way. Japan has strict rules about using that word. And in the EU, you won't find superfood on any food label. That term is banned. He thinks Health Canada needs to step up and crack down. It is a problem if a company use the word superfood and mislead our consumer. So how do you think it should change? I think our regulatory agencies like Health Canada need to come into the picture and uh, act on kind of a regulation mm -hmm. um, which food you could classify as either functional food or superfood. Why is this a superfood? Who decided that this is a superfood? And if you're going to advertise it, it should be regulated, right? It's a fad almost. Do you think Health Canada should let companies put superfood on packages? Uh, no. No? No, I don't think so. Why not? So it's kind of listening to the public. And so that's where we're going next, to Ottawa. When it comes to policing food labels, that job is shared between two agencies. This is Maya Velneuve with Health Canada. At Health Canada, we set basically the regulations. We actually do the enforcement part. And that's Aline Dimitri with the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. They confirm in Canada, the term superfood is totally unregulated. So speaking of superfoods, um, super flakes, super oats, super grains, super fruit freezy, central roast superfood, not crunch. Super hydrating. <laughs> There's a lot of very super things. Because the critics say superfood, there is no definition. What does it mean to be a superfood? So by allowing it on a package, it's misleading. It's not just the question of superfood, it's what else is on the package. What mm -hmm. makes that food superfood? We often work with industries. They'll often come to us mm -hmm. with a claim that they're planning to use on the package and ask for our advice, saying, okay, is this truthful and not misleading to consumers? Hmm, good question. Remember that product that shocked our dietitian? This was alarming to some of the people that we mm -hmm. talked to. Um, this is a superfood granola with quinoa. Reduces cardiovascular disease, a healthy digestion. Energy booster, sleep aid, prevents cancer. If you were to see this on a grocery store shelf, what would you think? Personally, my first thought is this is too good to be true. There is way too many claims and I would be asking some questions certainly from the industry. And as a consumer, I would also be raising it to the CFIA, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. Is this misleading consumers? Prevents cancer? 
all of the packaging has to meet the very foundational law of truthful and not misleading. So I cannot tell you, is this misleading? There's evidence behind it that needs to be examined. And so when you just look at a, at a label, that raises question, but it doesn't mean that the answer is automatic. And we can't just jump to judgment right away, but we do have to ask the questions. It's very important. After we contact Nature's Mix, they pull the product from shelves and review the label with the CFIA. Remember all those health claims? They're now gone. It's a drastic change. Nature's Mix says they didn't intend to mislead customers and they made an honest mistake. But the question remains. Why didn't the government catch this sooner? Well, the CFIA tells us somebody has to complain before they can step in. In the meantime, the government admits there's more work to do. Labeling is one of those areas that we are also looking to modernize. We'll be consulting with Canadians and with industry on it. So that for us is going to be the ultimate way to rejuvenating our framework to be able to address situations that perhaps when we developed the framework 50 years ago were not part of the conversation. We're going to check up on that. Even if the government is reviewing labeling practices, it still falls to you, the consumer, to speak up and say something if you see a label you're concerned about. And we want to see them too. So send us a tweet, find us on Facebook, email us, marketplace at cbc.ca leaving you with a little super food for thought for the next time you're in the supermarket. We're back on the case investigating food waste. That's before day, salad, still three days from now. These kids saw a need. There's so many people without food and blowing it up. And are taking matters into their own hands. Our project would empower all citizens, especially those trying to get back on their feet. What's changed? For Walmart, whose responsibility is this to try to reduce food waste? What's well, our responsibility?